Benvenuti al Wire Next Fest, questa nostra puntata dedicata al Next Normal, alla nuova normalità che dobbiamo costruire per uscire dalla situazione di crisi in cui ci ha condotti la pandemia del Covid-19. E lo facciamo partendo da uno dei temi più cari alla nostra testata, quello della sicurezza informatica. Partendo da un episodio specifico, il 10 settembre l'ospedale universitario di Düsseldorf in Germania è stato bloccato da un attacco ransomware che ha paralizzato completamente la sua attività. L'ospedale ha dovuto spostare e trasferire tutti i pazienti e purtroppo una donna che era stata condotta proprio in quella struttura per essere ricoverata è stata dirottata a 30 km di distanza e nel tragitto purtroppo è morta. Questo episodio è, è stato ritenuto da tutti gli esperti il primo in cui una morte è stata collegata direttamente agli effetti di una minaccia informatica. Ebbene, casi come quello di Düsseldorf ci rendono sempre più eh, chiaro quanto siano tangibili e pericolosi gli effetti delle minacce informate. Considerate che sono cresciute del 25% tra il primo e il secondo trimestre di quest'anno. Allora, per capire come affrontare questi problemi, come muoverci in un mondo che sarà sempre più connesso, abbiamo ospite al Wire Next Fest uno dei più importanti esperti di sicurezza informatica a livello mondiale. Il suo nome, o meglio, il suo cognome è noto a tutti quanti, è Eugene Kaspersky, ha fondato eh, appunto Kaspersky, una delle più importanti società di sicurezza informatica al mondo, 400 milioni di utenti utilizzano i suoi prodotti, 250 mila aziende sono difese dalle, dai suoi servizi. Bene, a questo punto l'intervista sarà in inglese e do il benvenuto a Eugene Kaspersky. Welcome, welcome Eugene. Buongiorno everyone. Buongiorno and welcome to the Wire Next Fest. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, I would like to start um, our chat um, from an episode that occurred um, the, last week. Uh, a woman died after, after a ransomware attack at the hospital of Dusseldorf in Germany. And this is probably the first time we can relate a death to uh, the effects of uh, a cyber attack. So what do you think, what does this dramatic episode teach to everyone? And do, do you think that this kind of risk will be often in, um, in the next future? Yeah. Uh, as far as I remember, this is not the first time mm -hmm. then the uh, computer malware were uh, partly or directly responsible for the human death. Uh, as far as I remember, the first reports about uh, similar situations, similar case, uh, it happened in 1993 or 94. Okay. Uh, there was a computer virus which infected MS-DOS, if you remember MS-DOS, systems and this uh, computer virus uh it's depending on some at some time or at some conditions uh if you print a document it randomly replaces few digits okay so if you print a paper if there's the digits it are numbers uh the virus randomly replaces some digits there and uh, there was a report Uh, that in the Netherlands, uh, uh, in a hospital, someone died because they got a lethal uh, amount of uh, some kind of the medicine. Uh, that was the first time I've heard about this. And uh, most probably, most probably, uh, this uh, uh, incident in a German hospital, maybe it's a second time uh, we have a similar situation with uh, uh, malicious attack on a medical organization, which as a result, there is a There is a human life uh, paid for that. Uh, but uh, actually, the uh, computer viruses, the uh, computer incidents are more partly responsible for the uh, massive uh, uh, cases like, uh, like, do you remember blackout in the uh, United States and Canada on the East Coast in mm -hmm. 2003? Yeah, uh, and there was for quite a long time was a massive blackout in many regions, including New York and Toronto. Uh, and uh, there was a, well, actually, the computer virus was not responsible for this incident. It just paralyzed some networks, mm -hmm. the computer networks, uh, and engineers they lost the time uh, to manage the, manage the power grid. Uh, so actually, their human lives paid uh, for the. Uh, malicious cyber attacks and there was a there were major incidents caused by this well regarding cyber security in the last few days you are talking about a sort of new concept the concept of cyber immunity 
you said we should move to a concept of cyber resilience to cyber immunity. So what is cyber immunity exactly, and what are the differences with the cyber resilience? Yeah, the, the, the idea of cyber immunity came to my mind uh, many years ago. Uh, well, actually, why the computer viruses do exist, why the malicious code uh, is possible to inject into the cyber systems, computer or mobile or internet of things. Uh, it's uh, simply because the operating systems and applications, they were the architecture of the systems, they were the, the, the major rules of developing this stuff. Uh, it was designed many years ago, in 60s and 70s, uh, 30, 50 uh, years ago. Uh, and actually at that time, there were no special uh, requirement for the uh, security because the cyber criminals, they didn't exist that time. Mm -hmm. uh, so the operating systems and uh, applications, the modern operating system and applications, uh, they are vulnerable uh, by design because they're made like this. Uh, so what came to my mind and uh, what I discussed with my engineers uh, is to design the architecture of operating system and applications, uh, which is impossible to attack. Uh, and actually, we have this uh, system. It's very compact. Actually, it's not like Microsoft Windows or Linux. It's very compact. It's ready for Internet of Things. Uh, it's ready for industrial systems. And we can guarantee that it's too complicated. It's impossible to hack this system if they designed in the right way. Okay, and, and, and to you, what are the, the biggest cyber threats that we will see in the next future? Uh, actually, there are, uh, let's uh, say there are not just one, but there are three of them, uh, but they depend on each other. The first of all, uh, the major trend is uh, that there are more and more cyber criminals. Mm. Uh, uh, every day we are collecting about 400,000 new malicious applications, the new malicious code which we never saw before. Uh, so it means that uh, 10,000, 100,000 of the criminals, of the hackers, which develop all this malicious stuff, uh, most of them, they are junior. Uh, so they're not too much complicated to protect uh, you from this kind of attacks. Uh, but the very bad trend is that they're getting more experienced, they're getting smarter, so they are able to develop more and more sophisticated attacks. Mm -hmm. And they join the highly, highly uh, aggressive, highly experienced hackers gangs, the criminal, cyber criminal gangs. And actually, it didn't happen like uh, 10 years ago. They didn't exist. So there, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the cyber crime, it was, it was just junior guys. Mm -hmm. So they would not know so much experience. Now, there are dozens of the highly professional criminal gangs which are able to hack even very well protected organizations like, like banks. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the worst trend is uh, that we have reports from our industrial partners. Uh, I mean, their, their physical systems, the production, the transportation, the power plants. Uh, so they report that they are more and more under this uh, there's someone, some hackers, they try them, they try industrial systems. So the worst trend is that the cyber criminals, especially highly professional cyber criminals, they're shifting from computer systems or traditional uh, victims, uh, computer systems, the smartphones, they are shifting to Internet of Things and attacking the industrial SCADA systems. This is the worst trend. And how can organization, companies can prevent the, and can keep their system safe from this kind of attacks and threats? Uh, well, actually, there are a few things uh, which you really need to do uh, is, first of all, uh, you have to pay more attention to cybersecurity uh, to protect your office networks uh, in industrial in networks as well. Uh, well, actually, I'm still surprised that uh, they their organization, like like hospitals, mm -hmm. they don't patch the systems, they don't invest enough in cybersecurity, uh, and some of them they use, well, I don't want to say the, the negative uh, about some of uh, cybersecurity companies, but not all products are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, they're different cybersecurity products, they guarantee different kind of security. And so this example of attack on the German hospital is, is just, it's just one case, it's just an indicator, but some of the endpoint security products, they're not able to stop ransom attacks. Well, actually, to be honest, well, 
I will not going to do any advertisement on your magazine. But actually, our customers, they don't have this major issue with ransom attacks. And so there are other cybersecurity products which also guarantee a very high level of protection. So if you, if you, Antivirus doesn't help you to protect, doesn't protect you from the ransom attacks. It's time to change your antivirus. This is the message. This is what you really need to do uh, to guarantee that your systems they are protected with a high quality cybersecurity products. Second, training for the staff, employees trainings, uh, to do their penetration tests, uh, to teach the employees, uh, to make your people, your staff aware of the cyber attacks and the office staff and the IT guys. Uh, so actually, it, it, there, are, there are special training, cybersecurity trainings, and it's possible to do. And if you own Internet of Things systems, or if you are industrial company, uh, you also need to think about the industrial security and having plan to transform it to the cyber immune systems. Well, the bill for the advertisement is coming, obviously. <laughs> no, well, I'm just joking. Well, um, sorry, <laughs> Eugene, but why, uh, um, you know, a sort of phishing message, a phishing email is still a very efficient attack. Why we can't stop this spreading of virus or ransomware attack from such a simple way to, to breach into a system? Well, actually, the humans are humans. Mm. The homo sapiens are still very curious. And if they receive some fishy email, uh, it's a high risk that they will anyway, they will click the link. So what to do? Uh, as I said already, the first of all, you need to have the good quality cybersecurity system. So even if your employees, they click the malicious links, it will the attack will be stopped by the cybersecurity system. And second, trainings for employees. Don't open every link. Don't, don't open the messages from the unknown person. And even if you receive the email from your boss, but the email looks strange, that's a matter to go back and ask, hey, okay, did you really send me that strange email? Or maybe it's just a fake email from, some, some from the bad guys. So actually, first of all, the technologies, the products to protect your network, and second, the trainings for employees. Previously, you described us the situation of shifting of the attack shifting from the computer system to the industrial system. So I would like to know how you will see this, the uh, evolution of the situation since we see a lot of services and companies shifting to a more connected world. I don't know the public transportation, the, mm, the public health, uh, energy, industry 4.0. So we are all moving to a more an hyper connected world. So we are extending the, the surface that attackers can, can attack, obviously. Yes, you're absolutely right. And we're living in the world which is getting more and more connected. Mm -hmm. And in the future, everything will be connected to the internet. Um, your fridge will be connected to the internet to, to order more food. If, it's, uh, if the fridge is empty, uh, your coffee machine will ping the cloud and report, okay, so my boss is waking up in the morning. And uh, as usual, the, the boss will need the taxi to get to the office. And autonomous car will automatically arrive at your home to take you to, take you to the office and advise you to share the car with someone else who is going to the more well, this the same way and on the way the car will be connected to the cloud navigator navigation system to optimize the traffic uh then uh, there everything will be connected the transportation the urban facilities the production uh you will not need to go to the supermarket to buy something you will click the link and the drone will deliver what you need to your office or your, to your home so actually everything will be connected and of course unfortunately the bad guys the criminals of course they will they will pay attention to the cyber systems like they they attack computers they attack smartphones they attack internet of things so the next step obviously they will expand uh, these kind of the attacks. They will expand it to the industrial systems as well. And that's a power, power grid, uh, that's transportation, that's healthcare, mm -hmm. but not just the computer networks of these organizations, but the industrial parts, but the 
but the different devices which are cyber and they're getting more and more cyber and they're connected. So unfortunately, uh, their cyber security is getting more and more important uh, thing. And actually it's uh, even, uh, that's why I speak not just about cyber security, but about cyber immunity as mm -hmm. well. Uh, because cyber security doesn't guarantee 100% of protection. So that's why, so the most critical systems uh, like power plants, power grid, transportation, healthcare, they must be redesigned uh, with the immunity uh, as a main part of the architecture of these cyber systems. And what do you think are the countries more advanced in this kind of protection of the infrastructure and of all their industrial systems? We see a sort of global landscape with three big actors, the United States, on a side, the China's on the other, and in the middle, the Europe that is working a lot on the regulation, speci specifically about cybersecurity. So is the European model working for you? Uh, well, actually, it's a very good question. And unfortunately, I still don't have an answer for it. Uh, well, actually, the countries which are more advanced uh, with, a, uh, with a protection, with a cyber security, and which are advanced in uh, regulation, at the same time, they more depend on cyber systems. So they are victims as well. So I don't want to say that uh, United States or Russia or China uh, or Europe is better protected than some island in the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. Because the island has no cyber security and it has no cyber systems. Uh, the other, other hand, the countries which are more advanced in the cyber technologies, they, of course, they are more incidents, they are more attacks on these countries, but they are also more advanced in cyber security. So this is a very good question. Uh, and uh, well, actually, I do, I, I'm working in cyber security uh, and I know a lot about this. But still, there are some questions this, which I can't answer. And uh, well, actually, I'm very curious what what the different countries will behave, uh, how fast they will be in uh, on the way of the regulating the cyberspace, uh, on developing their national national size cybersecurity systems. How many of the industrial systems will be cyber immune? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very curious about this. Uh, still, I'm working in cybersecurity, but there's still there are many questions which I can't answer. Well, Eugene, I will keep the, the question for our next interview, since unfortunately our time is running out. So I would like really to thank you for taking a part on the Wirenex Fest, and the invitation is open for another conversation, maybe face to face here in Milan. And for sure, the first question will be about the global landscape. I will take note. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Molto grazie e ciao. Ciao Eugene, grazie mille. E rimanete con noi perché il Wire Next Fest continua.